where you are joining us from. So I won't say good morning, good afternoon or good evening, but I'll just say hello and welcome to our forum for today. My name is Anushka and for those of you who don't know me, I'm the secretary as well as being a member for the SDA Home Education Association. If this is the first time that you have joined us for one of our forums, I'd like to say welcome and that we are pleased to have you and we hope that you will join us in some of the forums that we'll have in the future. If this is the second time that you are joining us or the umpteenth time, I'd like to say welcome back. And we also give thanks because that means that we shared some information previously that you found valuable and you've decided to come back for more. So we give thanks for that. For those who may not know too much about us as an association, as I mentioned, we're the SDA Home Education association we've been operating for over, well over 10 years but I guess you could say we've certainly been more vocal over the past few years and we certainly have lockdown to thank for that. The committee is made up of a group of volunteers who are spread out across the United Kingdom predominantly Scotland, Wales and England and it's our pleasure to be able to support those who are home educating, whether it's full time, whether it is part time, whether they've been educating their children at home for a long time or whether they're starting out. If they have questions, we're here to offer you support and answer the questions and give you advice as and when we can. The topic that we have for this evening is asking the question, what is the purpose of homeschool? Now you might hear that we may use the term interchangeably, homeschool or home educate, but basically they, when we refer to those phrases, we are referring to the same thing. Okay, perhaps she may have dropped off for some reason, lost connection. Um, but just to pick up from where Nushka was, uh, was saying that um, we are a network of um, what we call area coordinators. And so we, um, various individuals, various families, um, usually would experience, some with varying experiences of home education. But one thing that we share in common is this passion and desire to help other families and help um, parents who are either thinking of home educating or who are already home educating and just want to have a forum to be able to come share experiences. I can tell you that it's not an easy journey. I'm sure um, a lot of you can identify with that. And so it's important that we come together in these forums uh, to share ideas, to share topics and network, uh, to encourage each other as we look forward to the second coming of Christ. So we have a number of different people in different areas um, that we, um, that, you know, that are essentially there just to support other families in the area in which that they are. So if you're an area, if you don't have anyone nearby, uh, just reach out to us and we can always let you know um, who is your area coordinator and who's nearby you that can provide some support um, for you. So um, before we kind of just go into our, our program, uh, can I ask um, Arlene, Arlene, if you're okay, I know we're putting you on the spot, but would you mind just saying a prayer for us as we go into our, our meeting, if that's okay? Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your presence this day, we give you thanks, praises, honour and glory to your holy name. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus, that you can bring us all together, Lord, to come and worship you and speak about what we can do um, in the presence of your, 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 your majesty with our children. Father, you, in your words, you said that we can come boldly before your throne of grace. And we're coming to you, Lord Jesus, so that you can educate us, so that we can educate our children, so we can educate them for the kingdom of heaven. 
And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've given us this opportunity today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for that, Mr. Ali. And to just um, get started, there's like a short video that one of our, uh, Trevor, who is our, actually our treasurer, put this together about the association, just to give you a bit more information. It's literally about two, three minutes. The SDA Home Education Association exists to support and enable Adventist families in the practice of true education in the home. Our vision is to restore God's original plan at creation for the education of our children. The association can provide support when dealing with public or educational authorities and keep you informed on in home education development. We provide opportunities for families wonderful supporters and donors. Please consider giving a donation to support the work we do with homeschooling families. Your support will enable us to put on more events, run more seminars, hold more workshops and conferences, provide more materials and do more to support home school families. Any amount that you can give is greatly appreciated. Giving a regular monthly amount, however small, helps us plan ahead more effectively. But if you are unable to commit to a monthly amount, please consider a one-off donation to support our work. Why don't you head over to our website at www.sdahomeeducation.org forward slash support dash us, where you can find information on how to make your donation to us today. That's www.sdahomeeducation.org forward slash support dash us and make your donation today thank you so much for your support may god bless you okay so we're going to go straight into our topic and if you've been on any of our sessions before it is very informal so as we go through the presentation if you know you have a question relating to what is being spoken about please you know do feel free to just um, ask your question uh, raise a hand or even put it in the chat and we'll be able to to pick it up and answer your question so the idea is for us really to learn from each other uh, none of us are uh, uh, experts at this thing we're constantly learning and developing and growing uh, and so we learn from each other as the bible says that iron sharpens iron um, and so as as parents as grandparents um, grandfathers grandmothers husbands and wives as we join together in the education of our children um, as we connect as we speak as we network as we share as we encourage uh, we learn from each other and by God's grace, we can raise children for the kingdom of God. And so we want this evening just to talk a little bit about what is the purpose of homeschool and true education. I don't know about you, but um, I'm wondering if anyone has ever sat on the edge of their bed uh, with their hands in their head and kind of just wondered, what have I got myself into? Um, I don't know about you, but there's been times when uh, things are not going the way that we had envisaged or thought that it would. Um, and for a split moment, we have thought, wouldn't it just be easier if our children were in school? Uh, but we thank God that he gives us grace to persevere. We thank God that he gives us uh, the strength to stand and to, uh, to carry on. Because we know when we made that choice, uh, for those of us who had children in school and decided to take them out. Uh, it wasn't a decision that we took lightly. Uh, it was a decision that we took with much prayer, uh, with much fasting, um, with much discussion with um, those that needed to be involved in the discussion. And we took that decision because we felt at the, at the time that it was the right thing uh, to do. But as you know, the enemy sometimes brings doubt into our minds. 
Um, and so sometimes we question ourselves, we ask ourselves the question, but by God's grace, we want to encourage you this evening that you have made the right decision. Uh, or if you are in that place of contemplation and thinking about it, uh, we pray that God is leading you by his Holy Spirit in the right direction. Uh, and if you are a, a, a grandparent, a grandmother, a grandfather, and you're here online, uh, we pray that God will speak to you also and speak to your heart uh, that you would support uh, your children and also your grandchildren in this grand work that has been entrusted in, into our hands. Uh, for in God's system of education, uh, the entire family is involved in the education of the children. There is an African proverb that it says that it takes a village uh, to raise a child. Unfortunately, in this Western society, uh, we've lost that idea, that concept um, of community and because we're all uh, trying to make a living of our own selves in our own corner of the world. And so that village concept is lost. But in God's system of education, uh, parents and grandparents uh, and even others, godly um, associates are involved in the education of our children. So we want to ask the question, what is the purpose of homeschool and true education? Uh, before we kind of go into the main presentation, I just want to bring to your attention a few things. Perhaps you had not noticed uh, perhaps they had passed you by, but um, if you have been keeping an eye on what's going on in the media, in the news, uh, on the educational system, uh, you would have understood that education as we understand it is currently under siege. Uh, God's plan of education uh, that he gave to his, uh, his people, the children of Israel, and passed on through his word to us, this uh, final generation, is under siege and there are plans uh there are things in, which are coming into place and have been in place for a number of years um which seeks to wipe out god's true plan of education and we want to just look at a few of those things very quickly uh, so that we understand the context and the environment in which we are living today um, so i don't know whether you've noticed uh in france uh, these, I mean, different, uh, I've tried to keep them as recent as possible, but this was just in October of 2020. Uh, so we're talking four or five months ago uh, that the French president, Emmanuel Macron, moves to ban homeschooling altogether. His reason is to protect children from religion. He announced on Friday of that week that his intention to outlaw homeschooling in 2021, which is basically this year, for all children, unless they have a medical exemption that forces them to stay away from school. According to the report, the president said the government would step up control of self-funded private and independent schools through inspections of curricula and by strong enforcement of a new law that requires private schools to teach a common core defined by the state. In other words, here the French president is saying you will teach uh, what we tell you to teach. Uh, you have no say in your children's education. Um, you will teach the common core. Now, um, if you look at the UN's educational agenda, uh, if you notice that common core uh, phrase is in parentheses. Uh, if you do a little bit about um, a bit of a search on that, you will find the core, what's called core curricula. And this is a curriculum which has been laid down by the United Nations several years ago. Um, to educate the entire world, not in God, not uh, through God's system, uh, by a worldly system which goes completely against God's laws and God's commands. And so that's what's happening in France. Uh, in China, this is just at the beginning of the year, just last month, uh, Chinese officials raid the home of children in a Christian homeschool co-op. So can you see uh, the trends? Can you see that God's system of education uh, is under attack? And so it says that a Christian homeschool co-op, part of Early Rain Covenant Church, uh, which is a church group, a church ministry, um, that also hosts schools and other education sessions, was raided by the Chinese government. Just yesterday, I was having a conversation. In fact, yeah, it was yesterday um, with a family from Holland. And she basically informed me that in Holland, uh, once your child is in mainstream education, even if it's for a very short period of time, a week or so, um, you are no longer allowed to take them out of the educational system to homeschool them. Uh, there are a number of European countries where homeschooling uh, is actually against the law. Uh, if you live in the UK, you'd have come across this. 
um, uh, which came into force again in September of 2020. So again, we're talking about recent events, uh, less than a year in the last six months. Uh, this is the new curriculum which has been taught from ages nursery from two years up, um, where we're seeing materials um, which go completely against um, what the dictates of God's word says. So if you look at some of the materials that have been peddled, this is important for you to take note of, especially if your children are still in school at the moment. So you've got things like Daddy's Roommate, which is basically the story um, of two guys um, who live together, married as a couple, uh, and they adopt a young boy. And it's their journey of them bring, bringing him up. My Princess Boy uh, is the story of a young boy that likes to dress up uh, in girls' clothing. So these are things that they're encouraging uh, for two-year-olds. And there's lots of other material. And so if you're in the UK, you would be familiar uh, with some of this some of this material. At the same time, we're talking about what is true education, what is homeschool. Again, just in October 2020, uh, on the 15th of October, uh, the Vatican under Pope Francis launched what was called the Global Pact on Education. I've spoken about this previously, but if you don't know anything about the, uh, the Global Pact, um, it basically, they invited all who care about the education of the young generation to sign up to a global pact to create a global change of mentality through education. So what is the agenda? The agenda is to change uh, the mentality of young people through education. Uh, and so what was their purpose? As we look at our purpose, what was their purpose? And so here we'll see a clash of ideologies. Uh, we'll see a clash of systems because their purpose is completely different uh, to God's purpose um, of true education and home education for our children. So the event which reflect Pope Francis' vision for society and the world are geared to promoting a new humanism of fraternity and inclusion regardless of religion. But critics are concerned they will relativize the truth and uniqueness of Jesus by promoting uh, religious indifferent, indifferentism and syncretism. Now, these are big words, and I will, I, will, I will explain them so that it makes sense what these words mean. Um, and let's just look at that very quickly, just to save some time. So indifferentism, it is the belief that differences of religious belief are of no importance. So that ideology which is being promoted in the new educational system, uh, which was announced in October 2020, is that you cannot claim um, that your religious belief is the right one or of, is of greater importance than another. Um, it basically promotes the belief that all religions are the same, all beliefs are the same uh, and can be accepted by society. Now let's look at syncretism. Syncretism is basically the amalgamation or the attempted amalgamation of different religions, of cultures, and schools of thought. All right, so let me just open it up very quickly at this point, because this is a very important point as we begin to look at what is the purpose of God's plan of education. So here, the world has clearly laid out their purpose of um, global education. Now, if you look at the word humanism, um, humanism is, is another philosophy which is basically completely anti-God. So as you look at this, uh, what comes to mind? What concerns come to mind? Does this raise any questions in your mind before we kind of go into uh, what God's plan and what's God's purpose of true education for his people? Any comments as, uh, before we move on? Especially looking at those two words that we've just defined. No. Yeah, just a, just a quick one. Um, I'll comment on that one. You know, when we keep using the word um humanity um you know in our conversation are we slowly uh getting swallowed into this humanism uh kind of uh, stuff that you're talking about here because i hear a lot about uh caring for humanity this and that does it correlate with the humanism agenda or something like that it, it may well do. I mean, the word humanity itself um, is not a negative word. It refers obviously to the whole of um, society, the whole of mankind, as it were. Um, but as you know, um, people can hijack certain words or certain imagery um, for their own purposes. So, for example, you look at the rainbow. The rainbow is uh, depicted as being above God's throne um, and Christ is surrounded 
uh, by the rainbow. But if you look at the whole kind of um, LGBT community, they've also hijacked the rainbow uh, as a symbol of, um, of what they believe. Um, and so we can't, personally, I don't think we can read into it too much, but at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if that word is being hijacked uh, you know, to propagate um, what we know to be humanism. Does that, does that make sense? Oh, yes, indeed, it makes sense. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay, anyone else want to comment before I move on? Okay. So in addition, unless you've, um, you know, <laughs> locked up yourself in lockdown and not known what's been happening in the news, uh, you would know that Joe Biden became, uh, you know, the president of the United States and was inaugurated earlier this year. Why is that significant? Uh, there's a number of key points here uh, with regards to his presidency. Um, Joe Biden uh, becomes only the second Catholic president in the United States of America. Um, obviously, the first being JFK, and we know what happened to him as he spoke about the separation of church and state. Um, he not only um, is he the second Catholic uh, president, but he also enjoys a majority in the Senate and the House. Uh, not only that, but seven out of nine of the Supreme Court judges are also Catholics. The Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, uh, is also a devout Catholic. And there are calls for Catholic principles of common good uh, to be embraced. Now, if you know anything, again, just do a search about the phrase common good, um, and you will know that is a Catholic social doctrine, uh, which is basically against um, the principles and also the law of God, and also includes um, things like um, the national, you know, uh, a national day of worship being Sunday um, includes giving up your individual rights. Uh, it includes so many different things under that phrase common good. So wherever you see that phrase common good, always beware. Uh, it sounds great. In other words, it's almost like, you know, it's actually sometimes being used actually in the context of the vaccination also. I don't know whether you, you heard it, uh, but people should say that we should take the vaccine for the common good. Uh, in other words, not for our own personal interest, but, the for, but the for, for the good of the many. Um, and again, there are problems with that um, particular uh, ideology. Why do we talk about this? We talk about this because, and this is again, kind of like just a news article in terms of um, where it was, it, the, the, basically the, the author or the editor was basically saying that if America, uh, or if Biden says he will America, he will need his church. Now, which church does he belong to? He belongs to the Roman Catholic Church. Why do we talk about this? Why is this important in the context of um, education? It is important, as we see just probably in the next slide, uh, because we know that the last act in the final drama of this Earth's history is going to be to do with the Sunday law and Sunday worship. And so here, just a few very quick quotes. I mean, I could have given so many, um, but in Malaysia, uh, the, 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 the prime minister is saying that Sunday should be made a rest day with family. Um, the Catholic Church is asking to bring back the blue laws, which are the original Sunday laws. Uh, in Samoa, uh, the PM wants to ban Sunday trading. Uh, in, in, in Israel, Jerusalem, there's a Jewish scholar there who is calling for a weekly day of rest to combat climate change. And so here we are seeing uh, the integration of climate change with Sunday. Uh, in Italy, populists want to close stores on Sunday. Um, you know, it, it's, we're seeing um, what the Bible has prophesied. Um, and we are told that the substitution of the laws of men for the law of God, the exaltation by merely human authority of Sunday in place of the weekly Sabbath is the last act in the drama, the final act in the drama. When this substitution becomes universal, then God will reveal himself. He will arise in his majesty to shake terribly the earth. He will come out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the world for their iniquity and the earth shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. That's taken from Testimonies, Volume 7. And so in the context of all this uh, siege and attack on education, God is telling us in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 5 to 7, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, 
and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. I don't know about you, but when I read that text, it brings to view part of God's plan of families and education. Because when the Bible tells us um, in verse 6 and verse 7 that we should teach our children diligently um, when they sit in the house, when they walk by the way, when they rise up, and when, thou, when they lie down. That indicates to me uh, that there is a certain level of contact. There is an amount of time that we are to spend with them uh, that enables us to do this. If you think about um, modern society now, how many of us actually have time to speak, instruct, uh, and teach our children throughout the course of the day? This is suggesting um, that you are with your children um, for a prolonged period of time, from when they rise up to when they lie down, or when they're walking by the way, when they sit down at the table to eat, or whatever it is that they do, you are there with them to instruct, uh, to instruct them and to teach them. Uh, but modern society tells us that where, from when they're born, um, you'll either put them in a nursery because you have to go to work. Um, you put them in school from the age of two because your, um, your, your, your promotion at work is, calling, is important and you have to put in the hours. Um, and so we bring up a generation of children uh, who do not know the Lord. Why? Because their parents are, no, are not there um, to be able to teach them uh, the way of the Lord. This is the sad reality the majority of society is facing. And, and that's why you and I, uh, those that God is speaking to, uh, we are choosing a different, a different path. Um, we are told um, that now, as never before, we need to understand the true science of education. If we fail to understand this, we shall never have a place in the kingdom of God. Now, whenever I read that statement, it kind of brings shudders down my spine. Why? Because here God is bringing to view to the fact that if we fail to understand uh, what true education is about, we risk, um, we risk actually losing our salvation. We risk losing our place in the kingdom of God, not just us, but our children and our children's children also. So here God is admonishing us that we need to take time uh, to understand what it means, what true education means. Here, he, it's called a science of education. In other words, truly understanding the intricacies of God's plan of education. Uh, many of us have our own ideas of what God's true education is. But however, God does not leave us guessing. In his word and in his writings, he has placed his plan. He has shown us and it is down to us to search and to understand and to live those out in our families. You know, at the first advent, um, it is said that at his coming, the Jews did not receive him because they had gathered a false idea or a false education as to the manner of his coming. This Jesus, a peasant, a carpenter of obscure origin, the son of God, the Messiah, this could not be. This is what they reason. But if they had taken time to study, if they had taken time to read the prophecies, they would have been able to identify the Savior at his first coming. And we are told, as we read later on um, throughout those pages, that we living at the close of time um, are in danger of being in that same position, not realizing the time that we live in, not realizing the prophecies that have been being fulfilled round about us, not realizing that Christ's coming is even at the door because of the false education that we are being given uh, or that we're allowing ourselves to be given in some cases. And so we just want to go through a few very quick things um, in terms of why homeschool, why true education. I mentioned before that God has not left us to guess. Do you know that God has a blueprint for you and for the education of your children? God has actually laid out clearly throughout the Bible and through the spirit of prophecy, his plan uh, for the education of our children. And it is important therefore for us to become familiar uh, with those plans, to become familiar with that blueprint um, and follow in that way. God has made every provision. He has organized his great school with its various phases. You see, we don't have to guess. God has given us even the various departments um, that we should follow, the step-by-step -step process. And here we're told that these departments may be briefly expressed uh, in these four stages. Number one, the home school. Number two, the church school. 
number three, the training school, and number four, the school of experience. And so here, uh, clearly God lays out his various departments, beginning with the homeschool. And we're told uh, that no child, in fact, we're told uh, that our children, um, they should have no other teacher than their parents uh, up until, um, you know, from the ages of seven upwards. Um, why is that important? That is important because in those early stages is when a child's character is formed. And so if we allow uh, an atheist, if we allow an unbeliever, if we allow an ungodly person to have influence over our children, we risk losing them because that is the, that is the character formation that they are receiving. And so you can see very important, you can see very clearly how important it is, um, you know, that homeschool environment where we can educate our children uh, in the ways of the Lord. And so from the homeschool, God then expects us really to go into the church school. Now we say this, but it's really sad at the same time as we talk about this, that we don't have enough church schools. Uh, we don't have schools that can cater, uh, that as children go from the homeschool, they can be um, taken into the church school um, and continue that education that they have received in the church school. And so, you know, if God is calling you, if God is laying on your heart um, to set up a church school. Now, we're not talking about uh, systems of schooling where we're talking about huge institutions. Uh, we're talking about schools where two or three or four or five families can come together and set up a school. Um, and so if this is something that God is laying on your heart, um, because we don't have them, we don't have enough, uh, then I pray that, you know, you will heed the voice of God. Uh, as we seek to implement that which God uh, requires of us. And so from the church school, we are to go into the training school. What is the training school? The training school is a school where we learn trades, where we learn um, uh, useful work, where we learn about manual labor, where we learn about evangelism, where we learn about the practical ways in which we can give the gospel. Uh, and then finally, the school of experience or the school of life. Um, every day is an opportunity to learn something new. Uh, and so you see here that God clearly, and so in the context of homeschool, homeschool really is the first stage um, of a child's education from birth um, up until, you know, some, obviously some can educate um, homeschool right through, um, but certainly for the first, you know, seven, eight years of a child's life, um, we are told clearly uh, that the parents should be the teachers of that child. And so here we see clearly laid out Number two, so first reason, um, you know, is that God has a plan and he has laid out that plan. And it is only in obeying that plan and following that plan that we receive the blessings uh, that God has in store for us. We are not to live presumptuous lives, believing that we can do that which we wish to do and desire to do, that which goes against the laws of God and still receive his blessings. Uh, God promises to pour out his blessings on those who receive his word and do his word. And so reason number two, uh, the purpose of homeschool of tr or true education is for the perfection of character. You know, in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, the Bible tells us that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Um, and, and then he goes on to tell us that it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. And so here we see bringing, uh, brought to view again, uh, the purpose of education is the perfection of character. We're told that character building is the most important work entrusted to mankind. In Christ's Object Lessons, page 60, we're told that when the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. So just from that statement alone, uh, we can conclude uh, that a lot of us are lacking the character of Christ. And Christ in his patience, in his long suffering, is waiting for his character to be perfectly reproduced in us. Uh, then he will come to claim us as his own. And so as we homeschool, let us remember the primary purpose um, of education, of educating our children is to develop a godly character. And so the question that we need to ask ourselves, whether we're making the choice between sending our child to a worldly school 
or uh, making that great sacrifice to home educate them, the question we need to be asking ourselves is, when I send my child to a worldly school, is that school's, is that school's primary purpose to develop the character of my child to that of Christ? That is a key question that we need to be asking. And if we're not able to answer that question in the, in the affirmative, then we need to be looking at the alternative. And that alternative, which is actually the original plan, is that we need to take responsibility for our children's education um, in order that we may have that opportunity to develop the character that they need. A character formed according to the divine likeness is the only treasure that we can take from this world to the next. And so here we see how important our characters are. Uh, it is the only thing we're told that we will take, that we will carry uh, from this earth uh, to heaven. Um, unfortunately, some teach that when Christ comes, then our characters are changed. But the only thing that changes is our body. Uh, we, are, we receive uh, incorruption. We receive an immortal body. But our characters would have to have been formed on this earth and sealed before Christ's coming. And so part of that responsibility as parents um, is to form and to develop that character after Christ. The statues of the Lord, Psalm, Psalm 19 verse eight, the statues of the Lord are right. And he that doeth these things shall never be moved. As we look at character development, we, we in, in home education, um, especially in, uh, for example, the sunlight curriculum that we use, there is a lot which is said about nature. Um, and we're told to get out into nature as much as possible um, to see the wonderful works, the handiwork of God in nature. Um, and even though the earth has been uh, blighted and, um, and marred through sin, there is still enough that shows us uh, about our wonderful creator. Um, and so we're told on Councils of Health, page 162, that the Savior's life on earth was a life of communion with nature and with God. In this communion, he revealed for us the secret of a life of power. And so if you and I are to receive that life of power, our life must be a constant communion uh, with God and with nature. And so you, you recognize, even for us, as we come into true education, uh, we realize that it's more than education. It's about country living. Um, it's, a, it's about getting out in a, into an environment which is conducive to their learning. Uh, we come into contact with diet and health. Uh, we come into contact with dress reform. Uh, we come into contact with perhaps changing um, you know, the job that we do because it's not conducive to uh, the, the newfound um, role that God is, is open up to us. Um, and so character building involves so many aspects that God desires to do that for us as we prepare for his second, second coming. Okay, uh, number three as to why, why homeschool. Um, I love this because it bonds the family together. Um, if you have, and we have had um, friends pass away um, through lockdown um, through the corona uh, virus, as it were. Um, we had a neighbor just literally next door to us, um, you know, that passed away because of, um, you know, complications. Um, I'm sure some of you will know, will have family members or friends who have been touched, you know, by this virus. Um, but for us as a family, it's brought a, a unique opportunity for us to truly bond together, to spend time together. Um, just this afternoon, we sat down and we had an impromptu meeting about our plans, aspirations, how we improve our homeschooling, our timetable, our scheduling, uh, what's going to happen when we get back to work. This is an amazing opportunity uh, that we have as families to spend that time together. Um, and so when you are home educating, when you're homeschooling, you have that time, you have the opportunity, you're not rushed. Um, you're able to spend time you know, at the breakfast table at the dinner table, actually have meaningful conversations, uh, get to find out about the likes and the dislikes um, of your children, of your child, your son, your daughter. Um, and that brings us closer together. Oftentimes, uh, in a normal run of things, 
uh, the father goes to work, the mother goes to work, the child is sent off to school or to uh, nursery or whatever it may be. Uh, and so it's little wonder that there is such a big breakdown in society with regards to families. You know, the enemy's plan is to destroy the family. In fact, he wants to destroy the twin institutions uh, that God designed at creation, that of the Sabbath and also of marriage. And you and I uh, have experienced that family breakdown leads to societal breakdown because it is families that make up communities and societies. Uh, it is societies and communities that make up nations. And so if there is a breakdown in the family, then there is gonna be a breakdown in the nations also. Um, one of the principles of true education that I love right from the very beginning when we started looking at you know, homeschooling, true education, um, and it stuck with me throughout. And it basically said that the family, uh, in true education, the family learns together, works together and worships together. Uh, and here we see it, it, it helps to promote that bonding, that closeness within the family when you have time to learn together, to worship together, and also to work together. Why homeschool? What's the purpose of homeschool? What's the purpose of true education is the question that we're asking. Uh, number four is that it provides independence of thought. Independence of thought. You know, um, if you um, were to research the history of education, especially in the United Kingdom, uh, you will find that actually the system of education that we have currently um, was brought about after um, World War II, I believe it was, um, you know, when factories were destroyed uh, and also at the turn of the Industrial Revolution. Um, when the factories were being rebuilt, uh, where industries, great industries were being created. Um, and the merchants of this world, you know, the CEOs, the directors of this world realized that they needed an educated workforce um, who could think and act um, in a way in which they dictated um, that would meet their ends. Um, and so this system of education was created whereby you'd go to school in the United Kingdom and every single child would follow the same um, you know, educational curriculum, um, irrespective of their ability, irrespective of their natural propensities, in this, irrespective of the natural gifts that God has placed in them. They would still follow the same curriculum. They would go on to secondary school and do GCEs and GCSEs, the same subjects. They will do you know, A-levels, universities, et cetera, et cetera, because uh, they wanted people to, um, to act and behave and think in a particular way. Uh, but true education provides true independence of thought, the ability to question that which may be against God's word. Um, and so as we read God's word, uh, as we instruct our children, there are many times when our children have read a book, we were discussing this yesterday, uh, where they're reading a book and all of a sudden they say, well, this doesn't match up with God's word. This is not in God's word. Why? Because they have been giving God's word and in doing so, they are able to think independently for themselves rather than to conform um, to this world. We're told in the word of God, I believe it's Romans 12, uh, be you not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Um, you know, before um, mainstream education came about, you'll also know that it was actually the rich, the wealthy, the aristocracy that actually homeschooled their children and the masses were sent to school in order to gain this um, you know, one-way educational system. Um, but now when you talk about homeschool, it almost seems alien. Uh, it almost seems that you know, it's a bit strange to be able to do that. But God is calling us back to the old paths um, that will lead us, that will um, lead us to salvation uh, and help us to perfect our characters. So as we begin to round this up, I'm just conscious of, of, of time. Um, but there is consistency in teaching and beliefs. When we talk about what is the reason, what is the purpose of homeschooling? Um, you know, you're a Seventh-day Adventist uh, Christian. Uh, you have certain beliefs. You hold certain beliefs uh, which you believe to be true based on the word of God. Um, you believe uh, that God's commandments still stand. Uh, you believe that God's Sabbath uh, still stands. You believe that the diet, you know, God's plan of diet for us to give us health and strength, you know, still stands. Um, and so 
as you begin, as you seek to bring these um, and to instruct your children in these ways, uh, they go to school and receive a contrary education, uh, oftentimes confusing the children. Um, and if, you, if your child has been in school before, you will know uh, that often a teacher has more influence uh, over your child. I remember many times when our child would come back from school and we were correcting them or saying something to them, and they would say, but my teacher said, but my teacher said. Uh, in other words, they are placing more emphasis on what the teacher said and what the parent is saying. Uh, and so home educating your child allows you to be consistent uh, in the teachings. Um, what you're teaching was not going to, what you're uh, learning from the Bible is not going to be contrary to that which you are teaching your children. And so there is a consistency uh, and that consistency is what helps to consolidate um, and make firm the teachings that we are teaching our children. Okay, um, sorry, I I've actually gone. <laughs> okay, okay that was, that's the wrong way around. But um, number six, this should be number six, is that um, we're asking a question again, let's keep referring back to the question, what is the purpose? Why homeschool? Um, another reason is that it builds our foundation of faith. You know, in Revelation chapter 14 um, and verse 12, the Bible brings to view, it says that here is the patience of the, of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. So at the last, um, you know, when it's all said and done, uh, it is the faith of Jesus that will enable us to stand in the trials. Um, and so as we home educate, as we make unique sacrifices, as we give up our well-paid jobs, as we give up our careers, as we give up you know, our businesses, as we give up what it, whatever it is that we have to give up in order to make this work, that in itself is a step of faith. And God is desiring to build on that faith. You know, God's currency uh, is faith. We exchange our faith um, you know, for, for, for God's blessings, as it were. Faith always leads to obedience. And as we obey, God pours out his blessings upon our lives. Um, and so we may find ourselves in a position where perhaps there's now only one income coming to the family. Uh, there is reduced income. Um, perhaps our bills are, are mounting up or whatever the situation might be. We now have to rely because we know that we have made that um, that right choice, that right decision, that we must now rely on God. And I can say to you, the other day we were saying that, you know, God has, we have never lacked of anything. As we have put our faith in God, he, we have never been in a position, as far as I can remember, where we've opened the covers and there's no food. Um, God has allowed us to be able to pay for our bills, even though in the last seven months of the last year, We've not been at work due, due to lockdown, but God in his faithfulness has provided for us. And that in itself has built our faith, has strengthened our faith, because how can you not work for seven months uh, and still be able to survive? It is nothing of our own doing other than the blessing and the favor of God. And God desires to continually build our faith uh, to the point where we trust him in every aspect of our lives. Um, and so this um, homeschooling, true education, helps to develop and to build our faith. Finally, I would say um, true education, homeschooling. If you're wondering why, if you're wondering um, why you've made these sacrifices, if you're wondering whether you made the right choice, uh, if you're wondering whether to make that decision, if you haven't made that decision, I hope some of these reasons have helped to kind of encourage you uh, to keep going or to make that step. Uh, finally, I want to say that true education, um, of which homeschooling is the first step, prepares us to be able to give the loud cry and to receive the seal of God, enables us to receive the seal of God. And that is what we want, because we either receive uh, the seal of the living God or we receive the mark of the beast. Um, you know, we have a unique message. Uh, as Seventh-day Adventist Christians. Uh, we believe that the message for this time is the three angels' messages found in Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 12. To give a message um, to a dying world, 
uh, calling people out of a worldly Babylonian system, uh, which is anti-God, uh, to a system that desires to save us, to give us eternity, to give us eternal life. And God is preparing our young people. God is preparing us as parents. God is preparing us as individuals uh, to be able to stand and give that loud cry message when he pours out his Holy Spirit without measure upon the lives of those who will consecrate their lives to him. And so as we do that, as we read the word of God, as we begin to understand the plans that he has for our lives, as we begin to understand that even now he's pouring out his Holy Spirit and he's looking for young men, young women, young boys, young girls, adults, fathers, mothers, parents, and grandparents, as we read in Joel chapter two and verse 28, that God is looking to pour out his spirit upon all flesh um, to seal his people um, for the final conflict. You and I will understand that this struggle that we often face when it comes to homeschool and home education, it will all be worth it when we receive that crown of life, when we can look back and God can repeat and say to us, well done, that good and safe, faithful servant. Enter now into the joy of the Lord, into the joy of, of my salvation. And so I just want to encourage you as I bring this presentation to a close, that if you're doubting even now about whether you've made the right decision, if you're at, at that crossroads of decision and wondering whether you should um, take responsibility for your child's education, look at the current events uh, that we looked at. Look at the educational system uh, which is being brought into place um, and compare it with God's plan. It may seem difficult, it may seem challenging, and perhaps that is the cross and the burden that we have to bear in order for Christ um, to perfect our characters. But I want to say to you that it is worth it and it will be worth it uh, if we make that decision and allow God to lead us. And so as um, I bring this um, presentation to a close, I pray that you have been blessed. Um, we're now going to go kind of into our um, question and answer. But just before that, this final quote from Adventist Home, page 17. And it says that God would have our families as symbols of the family in heaven. Let parents and children bear this in mind every day, relating themselves to one another as members of the family of God then their lives will be of such a character as to give to the world an object lesson of what families who love God and keep his commandments may be. Christ will be glorified. His peace and grace and love will pervade the family circle like a precious perfume. I pray that this will be the experience of each of us that are listening to this forum now and we'll listen to it at a later date, that this will be our experience, that as we seek to bring um, our children up in the way of the Lord, that Christ, that God himself will be glorified, that his peace and grace and love will pervade our families like a precious perfume. I know that there are some questions uh, in the chat. I could see them going, but I couldn't really see because of um, the presentation on screen. Let me just... Pause okay, it. and Brother Joseph, we'll just allow you a few moments to catch your breath and <laughs> to thank you for the presentation that you shared with us this evening. As it's been mentioned before, we're going to spend the next few moments allowing you to ask any questions which may have arisen as the presentation was taking place you can either raise your hand and speak them out or you can put them in the chat that would be fine but just to start off I know this one isn't in order but someone's just asked can you just clarify what you mean by true education brother Joseph Okay. Um, all right. I mean, true education is is wide and it's broad. Um, and you said that you kind of um, joined maybe a little bit late, but perhaps you can go back and look at it. But just in a nutshell, uh, true education essentially is an education um, that leads to the perfection of character. So true education in its in its in its um, in, it, in a short version of it, that's what it does. 
and it involves um, three aspects. It involves um, the physical, the mental, and the spiritual. Um, so that's, in a nutshell, that's what true education is. Thank you. One of the questions that's been asked from one of our sisters is the sister in question. She's a person who works nights and she has got limited time during the day to teach her child before she needs to have a rest. And it often means that her child is left on his own and up to his own devices left up to his own devices, so to speak. And she's not really sure what she can do in regards to that because it's not fair on him and she can't do anything different at present. So she's reaching out for any advice from any other individuals. Okay, thank you for that um, question, a very important question. And I think to me, it suggests to me that you are certainly committed, um, you know, to true education and homeschooling to be able to do that. At the same time, um, I would say that um, what you don't want to do is to take your child out of um, education and then leave them to their own devices. Um, and so somehow something has to, has to give. Um, either we're looking at you know, normally, remember what I said about, um, you know, taking a, a village to raise a child. And obviously, we're living in different circumstances, different environments. But here, what I'm saying is, if you have other support networks, if you have uh, a grandparent, if you have uh, aunties or uncles, or if you have anyone outside, godly friends, uh, people that you may be able to, um, you know, kind of you know, in this, we're, 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 we're told about a support bubble for the coronavirus, but you can have a support bubble for your the education of your child also, where there are other people that are involved in that. Um, failing that, um, then you will you are going to be facing the position where you're going to have to either, you know, change jobs, uh, look for an alternative. Um, but what I would say to that, each of us has a different challenge when we start homeschooling. And this may be the challenge that God is looking to develop your faith in, that if you're making the right decision, that he will provide for you. Because ultimately, you're going to work because you need to bring income to be able to pay the bills. Um, but I believe that when we make the sacrifices uh, for God, he never, he never, ever fails us. Um, and so if you're left with no option, if you have no friends, family, um, extended family that can support you. Um, you know, there are ways, there are single parents who are educating their children um, and still maybe having a home business of some sort that, you know, works around their education. So there are alternatives uh, and perhaps, you know, reach out to us um, and we can maybe come up to, with some uh, specific ideas relating to your specific circumstances. But there's always a way out. God always has a way um, you know, the, the text that says, for every trial, God has a way of escape. Um, we may not be able to know what it is now, uh, but I believe once we've made that commitment, God will enable us to be able to come out of it. I know there are other coordinators online as well, so if anybody else wants to contribute, that is also, but that, that would be my suggestion. Yeah, so in following up from that question, there was a part which I missed out, just identifying that the sister in question she is a single parent and she doesn't have the support of her parents so as you were saying earlier in regards to a support bubble it may not necessarily be blood family but there may be other people that she'll be able to reach out to for support so whether it's other people who are members of the association and also praying and asking for God to open up a way for her to receive the support that she needs and possibly to get in contact with another single parent who is also homeschooling so at least that way then as the bible says iron sharpeneth iron so this sister may be able to get support that way okay yeah, for sure, definitely. And like I said, um, please, 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 please do get in touch with us. Um, and if we can support you in any way, if we can uh, 
uh, like Anishal said, iron sharpens irons. If we, uh, there may be other parents um, who have experiences that we can share with you uh, to enable you to, to, to carry on because the enemy's plan is to discourage you, um, you know, from following through on the decision that you have made. So if we can support you in any way, uh, we will certainly do that. There is um, remnant prep as well. I don't know how old is the child, but there is remnant prep where people can get support for parents who are going through a transition. Um, it's not a place that you can put your child there to think it's like a, a formal school, but at least you have like um, three hours lesson in a day. So if you can either select some subjects that you want to do um, with remnant prep and then taking um, the rest of the week to also do something with the child as well or after she possibly gets some rest knowing that she's had that support and then she can take over from there as well. Just to follow on from that sister Harriet, the sister has identified that the child is seven and somebody is asking, I think it's in relation to the school that you just mentioned, they're just asking if you can confirm if this is an Adventist school. It is, it is an Adventist school. Um, the system of education that's been used there is the, um, the, um, the sunlight curriculum. And so um, I don't know what curriculum that she's using, but um, the one that um, Remen Prep um, School is based on sunlight curriculum. I see that Angela's raised her hand and she's actually the, the, the principal of the um, Remnant School in the UK. So perhaps you can just expand on that a little bit and just clarify that question. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for that wonderful presentation, Brother Joseph. Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I just missed, I've been in transit, so I, I miss how old the child is, but as Sister um, Harry has said, that oh, yes, very seven. much, Sorry, seven. He's seven. Oh, seven. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So we, we won't take children before seven. Um, based on principle that we, you know, as with a support for schooling families, we really want families to be able to um, be with their children as much as possible. And we're there to for those extra um, subjects that you need help with and support in your home school. So yes, we're very much Adventist. Um, the main school, I should I say the main school, they started in America about six years ago. And we just started our branch of the UK division in 2019. This is our second year. And we do run for the morning. And we really encourage families to spend the rest of that time together um, doing more practical life skills, practical activities for the rest of the day. We do use a sunlight curriculum that has been mentioned already, which is a Bible-based curriculum and very much true education. I heard somebody asking earlier on what true education is, and it, it can be said in so many different ways. But one of the ways um, I like to explain as well is the harmonious development of the physical, spiritual and mental. And, and we say that because in the mainstream schools or the Hebrew schools, as we call it, um, there's a lot of emphasis, the emphasis is mainly on the mental and a bit of the physical, but there isn't the spiritual. Um, whereas, um, you know, for us as God's people, we want it to be harmoniously developed. So that's the, the first part. And the other part of it that I would say is that um, if there's true education, there's false education. And so by focusing on the true, which is the Hebrew Bible way of educating, then the um, we don't want to be bogged down with all of the trappings that exclude education that has been mentioned early on, that humanistic aspect. So I hope that answers a little bit of the question that you had, particularly on um, um, recovery schools. But I can put number in this kit with me. Um, as I said, we do begin around seven and it's very much tailor-made so that whatever sport you want um, within the um, that aspect, we're, we're going to have to support. All of us as the teachers at Remnant Prep, have either we're all uh, teachers parents who have homeschooled our own children and um, there's one teacher who was isn't a homeschool parent but was homeschooled herself and we all use the sunlight curriculum and we follow the principles of tree education and uh, it's bible principle and we're very much for developing and working with the family to develop character 
Thank you for that, Sister Angela. Don't disappear just yet because this next question is something that you may be able to answer for us. There's a mother who has said that she, when she gets called back to work, she doesn't want to send her daughter back to school. So she wants to know what she can do. In, in terms of um, to homeschool or to get her child out of school, is it specific? I Because there's past two ways I can answer that. Okay. As mm -hmm. the question actually reads, it says, I don't want to okay. send my daughter back to school. What can I do? Okay. All right. Then. Yeah, that's clear. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so the first thing you need to do is um, look into your circumstances and make sure that that you kind of think about why you want to homeschool. Yeah, why you want to homeschool. And the first process, uh, other than that, you you know that someone's going to be at home with your child or your children. Um, and that you can balance that commitment because it is a big commitment. But I'm telling you, we hold our children for 16, 17 years. My youngest one is still finishing off some of her studying, but obviously it's not, she's not being schooled in the same way as you've done here. Um, but it's just such a wonderful opportunity. Um, but what I would say is you go and look on the gov.uk website under home education, because there is a law aspect to it. There is a legal aspect. And once you've done that, um, um, you need to look on there and it actually tells you, it's very, very clear in terms of home educating that you can do it. It's not against the law. It's lawful in the UK to home educate your children. But just a side note, the fact that your children are at home now, if they're in school due to the lockdown, it's not classed as home education, that your child is still registered at school. So although when our children go to a school, we don't physically say I'm registering them, they, once they attend the school and they're enrolled, they are actually officially registered. So what we would say is um, look on the government website and you have to deregister your child. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you for that website, for, for Joseph. So you need to um, deregister them. To deregister your child, there's a template on the gov.uk website. There is also a template on education otherwise. And that template, basically, you can use that um, Make sure that you are very certain about the decision first. Very big decision, but it's a wonderful decision. Um, but and once you've committed and you put, uh, trust, put your trust in God, He will definitely direct. But the legal side of it is to deregister your child, your daughter, your son from school through a letter, and then you put their your, your name, their name, their date of birth. It's all there, and then once that letter goes in, your child is deregistered. You'll get a reply from your school in writing. And um, you can give a week or two's notice. And then from then on, you can join us with homeschooling your child at home. So we're here to support in whatever way we can. And particularly the coordinators that are in your area as well will be able to help. Thank you very much for that, Sister Angela. And Sister Jacqueline, if you are there, maybe you'll be able to add some words of wisdom for this particular mother who has a child who is one years old and would like her to be homeschooled. Fantastic. Um, what I would like to say is go forward in faith and uh, in the power and strength of the Lord. You know, it's not by mind nor by power, but by the spirit of the Lord, we can do this. Um, I love how you say, I don't want to send her back to school. That's, that's liberty right there. And the Lord will empower you and give you um, anything that you may lack because of this decision, but know that the blessings will be untold. And remember, our work for homeschooling is to um, teach our children, well, first of all, be taught by the Lord ourselves and teach our children to stand true in the times ahead. And there's no other curriculum and no other way that that can be accomplished apart from the way that God sets forth for us. So the, the first battle has been won in that you have made a choice and God will bless it and seal you in that decision. So if we can help in any way, and I'm sure we can help you, um, please contact us and we'll be more than happy to help in any way we can. And so Sister Jacqueline then, if the mother has a child who is one years old, who... Yes 
unless this child is a child prodigy who is reading and writing, might be wondering what can the mother do in regards to homeschooling? Oh, there's so much. Um, teaching our children begins before, even before they are born. Um, our habits of eating and drinking and of being, and even our sentiments or our dispositions, even during uh, the time we're carrying them is part of this education. Um, right now at one year old, oh, the whole world is a, is a, is a wonderful uh, educational resource. You know, uh, the sky, the trees, who made the trees? You know, I used to sing this song as my children were growing up, who made the trees? God made the trees. What day did he make the trees? He made the trees on day three. And you just sing these things, songs as you walk along the way. And before you know it, they're singing it and pointing to tree and counting to three without you, know, you sitting them down at a table and doing these things. But also worship, family worship. You know, you're thinking, what can I do with my child at such a young age? Singing songs, scripture songs, all of these wonderful ways to help imprint the word in their minds and in their hearts. Um, helping mommy to wash the dishes, you know? Uh, I used to put a mat uh, on the floor and put uh, some water and, and whatever to help the child to imitate what you are doing. Hanging the clothes, all of these are wonderful sources or resources of education for our children. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you very much for that. Brother Joseph, you may be able to add some words of wisdom in regards to this particular question. Somebody is asking, what practical things do home educators do for income as not many people can be business minded to run their own? Okay, so I guess there's a we need to um, find out perhaps the specific circumstances. Um, so is it a, a parent who maybe, let's just assume it's, it's, it's the, um, the wife that's home education and the father's at work. So are we looking at one income family or are we looking at a, a single parent who's educating, them, who's educating their child and they're looking for additional income because the circumstances would be different um, in that case. But there are so many, you know, wonderful things that um, individuals can do, um, you know, to generate additional income. Um, you know, we have recently come ourselves personally into the medical missionary work. It's not something that we thought about. It's not something that we considered, even though we've been personally in the church for a good number of years. Um, but it's, it's just uh, opened up so many uh, doors for us. Um, it's opened up so many opportunities that we've never even considered before. Uh, and that's something that can be uh, certainly easily done around you know, home education because it forms part of it. Um, all of our children, one six, the other one's 12, uh, have been involved in the training. Um, and it's wonderful sometimes when, you know, perhaps somebody is unwell or somebody has a fall or, um, something happens in the house and you see them, you know, um, obviously we, we encourage them to pray first. And then the next thing is they're looking at what can we do, whether it's cayenne pepper, whether it's aloe vera, whether it's, you know, whatever it might be, remedy that they find. And this can in itself be developed uh, into a business. Um, just to, today, I spoke to a young lady um, who's bringing up two children and she's just actually this evening, she said she may not be online. If she is online, do say hello and perhaps mention your website, but she's actually building a website to sell um, herbs uh, and natural oils and things like that. Um, so that will bring in an income where, she, you know, it's an e-commerce based business. Um, there are individuals who are using things like Amazon. There is actually a business model called Amazon FBA. FBA stands for Fulfilled by Amazon. So where you basically don't hold any stock, because that's one of the big issues when it comes to online, you know, where are you going to stock it? But what happens is that Amazon actually stocks the products for you and you simply market um, and they do the delivery and returns and custom service and everything like that for you. That's another option. You've got things like, um, I mean, 
the we don't hear a lot about the coal porter in work um but that is an option i personally am signed up as a coal porter um every so often i sell books um although we don't use that as a as a source of income we just kind of put it back in to buy more books but that's what we've chosen to do uh, but that's certainly an, an an option um there are or if you've got a particular skill you know i spoke to somebody last week um who was actually a fashion designer and was teaching at a fashion college um, and God convicted her that what she was teaching at the college in terms of fashion, she could no longer continue. Um, and so now she's building a website um, where she can actually teach people how to sew. So in other words, she's monetizing a skill that God has given her already uh, and using it for God's glory. So she's, she's teaching about dress reform. She's teaching how to make simple things for the house. She's teaching how to, you know, hem clothes, how to make simple clothes, cushions or house furnishings, um, you know, so there's lots of uh, options. Um, I would encourage you, like uh, God said to Moses and asked him the question, what is in your hand? There is always something in your hand that God can use uh, to bless you with. Um, and so even before you go looking outside, just look at yourself and take a personal inventory uh, of your skills, your abilities, your talents and gifts that God has given you uh, and see how God can use that uh, to bring income uh, into the household. So I hope that's given a few ideas um, with regards to that question. Thanks very much for that. Before we move on to our next question, there is somebody who would like to share some encouragement with the rest of our group because herself and her husband, they're not currently working, but they just want to encourage those about the job that God does help. So, Melise, I'd just like to hand the floor over to you if you'd just like to share your story for the next few moments. Okay. Hey, my name is Melise. I'm from Kassau. And our, when we start um, married, my um, husband stopped working. And then five years ago, I have no job either. And two years ago, we started homeschooling. What I want to say is um, every time, if you have, on, don't have a job, um, God is willing to help us out. We have not passed away without eating or drinking. There are some things that are more difficult, but um, He is willing to teach us to trust in Him. And sometimes it seems it's, um, there is no way, but if you pray and trust, he will, he will, guide, will guide you. And you will receive help from those that you don't expect. And by doing the medical missionary work, although we don't um, ask fees from the people, but by helping, they get courage and they help out. And we never had to go to buy clothes or have anything like that because you receive it. I don't know if I can <laughs> encourage correctly, but um, don't get the, um, the spirit or just have faith in God that he is willing to help you out and if you have taken the decision to homeschool it, he will write you. I'm doing it two years. I am say it's not that easy, but step, step, you're willing to guide you. I hope. Amen. Uh, Amen. Can I just also add, um, good evening, everyone, that- um, Amen. Uh, on, on, the point of, on the point of income, it is a time where the Lord is teaching us to trust wholly in him. And I, I believe the Lord is calling all of us to recognize that we are to do his will and his work, and then he will take care of our needs. And homeschooling is very important at this time for our children not only that but when we dedicate our lives to god 
we ask, what will he have us to do? Then he certainly will guide us into whatever it is that he wants us to do. And, and from there, he will equip us and he will provide for us as the sister before just mentioned, you know, as she goes out um, with the medical missionary work to bless and to minister others. That, that way that the Lord is calling us will mean that we just have to trust him when it comes to supplying our needs. And he promises that he will supply our needs. So um, that's also one thing that we need to bear in mind. It's not just about trying to figure out how we're going to juggle homeschooling and earning an income, but it's, it's more so just dedicating our lives to God, dedicating our families to God, and just asking the Lord, what will he have us to do? And once we are in his will, we can rest assured that he will supply our needs and he is faithful. He's got um, the, all the cattle on the hill belong to him. So we don't need to worry when it comes to what we need to do. But the devil would want us to become so consumed with how we're going to live, how we're going to survive, how we're going to cope, how we're going to manage, are our children going to benefit from being homeschooled? But the long, in the long run, when we have dedicated our lives to God, we can rest assured that he will. And he's more than willing and he's more than able to supply our needs in this regard. So that's my encouragement. We are all in a particular situation at the moment. It may be very unique and, and specialized, but God is seeking to mold us and to fashion us and to prepare us um, to, to, to stand with our family, with our children in the final run. So I just want to encourage us not to be, you know, um, focused on the, 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 the income side of things, but to focus on what it is that the Lord may have us to do at this time. Amen. Thank you very much for that, Sister Kizu, and also for Sister Melise sharing your experience as we're coming towards the end of our session this next question if we're not able to answer it this particular time we'll certainly research it and be able to come back with an answer for you if the mother ha is feeling led to open a church school the mother who has a four-year-old she's wanting to homeschool her child but not just that, but also to take on some other children to help parents who would also like their children to be home educated. So the questions that the mother is asking is, what is the ideal number of children to have? And are there any practical tips that we can share as she's considering opening a church school, whether she is to register it as a school or whether she would need to be registered as a child minder. Okay, let me just throw in just a few very quick things and perhaps somebody else can, can contribute. And I think it's, it's amazing that God is putting on your heart to, to do that. Um, like we started off by saying in the presentation that if God has a plan for our education, he also has a plan for how it should be set up and how it should be run. Um, and so again, we don't have to second guess. We don't have to try and reinvent the wheel as it were. Um, I don't know how far or how much research that you've done, um, but I would encourage you to read. There is a book that I read about two years ago, which was just fascinating. Um, it's called Studies in Christian Education by Edward Arthur Sutherland. And he is basically regarded as the father of Adventist education. Um, so he set up uh, the Madison School along with um, Sister White. And um, it became the model school really basically until our educational system was obviously hijacked. Um, so I would recommend you read that because I mean that book goes into detail even as much I was surprised even in terms of how the buildings should be where they should be situated, the kind of grounds and environment that they should be in, the qualifications for the teachers. Uh, it kind of details everything. It's almost like a blueprint really for setting up a school. So I would just you know, humbly uh, recommend that 
you read that book because it has some very clear guidelines. You've also got books like The, Blo um, the Broken Blueprint by Vance Farrell. Obviously, you've got you know, other well-known books, Education, Studies in Christian Education, Fundamentals of Christian Education. But the one that I, I personally read that had great detail was uh, the one I mentioned, Studies in Christian Education by Edward Arthur Sutherland, E.A. Sutherland. Um, so that could be a good starting point. Um, obviously, prayerfully consider what God is asking you to do. But a, a Christian school, a true education school, is not recognized by the number of students. So it may just start with, you know, two, three, four, five parents coming together. And that in itself is a school we encourage to do that. Um, so, yeah, that's a starting point. And obviously reach out to us, like Sister Mishka said, for more specific details, we can do some more research. Uh, but I think that would be a good starting point. I'm sure there may be others who are able to contribute to this question. Yeah. Can I just, just to clarify, yeah. sorry, sorry, Brother Neil, just to clarify, the person who's raised the question, she's just clarified meaning that she means a home school, not a church school. So I, I guess, yes, yeah, so I guess it's a case of home educating, not just her child, but also other children as well. In terms of doing that, would she have to register as a child minder? Is there a limit as to how many people that she is able to home educate in her home, seen as they're not her actual children? I think that's kind of like what she's asking for advice Are we on. saying a school, but in a home environment? I think so, based on right. what the most recent questions are, yes. Again, Brother Neil, I think, could contribute to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... There are, there are guidelines, you know, government guidelines in terms of what constitutes a school. And it has to do with um, the number of children and the number of uh, um, hours a week that the, that the school, or in this case, like a, you know, extended home school is going to run for. Um, so it would be important to um, understand those guidelines because um, in some cases, people have tried to do basically try to run schools, maybe small schools, but without coming under the, um, the um, category of a school. And sometimes where the government see that somebody's trying to run a school, but to make it seem like it's not a school, um, they will deal with them as a school. So uh, it would be, the information is out there. It would be important to, um, understand that and then to know how to position yourself i mean there are because there are other models some people run uh, what's called um i believe it's called le um learning centers where they run for a certain amount of hours a week um and they will have children coming there but they're not uh, classified as a school um so there are there are different options um i should just say that i am very interested in looking at different models you know for Adventist education um, in terms of schools or semi-schools, you know, or extended home school. So if the person would like to make contact with me, you know, I would discuss further with them and give them um, maybe some more information and um, just let them know some of the things that I'm, I'm actually looking into myself. Yeah. Thank you very much for that, Brother Neil. And just a moment. Okay, Neil, she's asking right. to share your contact details. Neil? Uh, it seems like uh, uh, my question is not Oh, open. yes, sorry, yes. I'm, I'm gonna put them in the chat, thanks. Okay, with that in mind, I think there is still a need for clarification as to the difference between what we're saying when we're saying a church school and home school, because someone's asked this question again. Neil, would you want to pick that up or should I carry on? The difference between a church school and a home school. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, earlier I, in the earlier in Brother Joseph's presentation, when he was talking, mm. he was talking about God's ideal. Oh, and he see. was talking about the homeschool, mm. which then led led to where in spirit of prophecy there is mention about church schools. So I think it's just okay. clarifying what okay. is meant so, by church okay. schools. Let me just clarify that then. So from in that context, uh, the homeschool was basically defined as uh, the school in the home where um, the child. Um, the, the, uh, the parents of the child are the teachers, yeah. So the 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 the, the education is given by by the parents. Um, the instruction is given by the parents. Um, usually, that in most cases that would be the mother, but there are circumstances where it's it's the father that would do that, depending on the situation in the home. Um, and that's up until the ages of seven uh, and eight. If you remember what Sister Angela said, they don't take children at the Bremen school until at least seven. So again, that is following that blueprint and that guideline. So if you're from age seven, eight onwards, if you're going to send them to school, the church school would then be, um, you know, a school environment, perhaps outside of the home, um, where they would be exposed to other teachers, not necessarily yourself. So it'd be like a, um, a school that they would normally go to, but a Seventh-day Adventist school, um, you know, in, in, the truest, in its truest sense. So that's kind of the differentiation between the, the homeschool and the church school. I hope that kind of clarifies it a little bit. Thank you very much for that, Brother Joseph. Yes, it has been clarified. Thanks very much. Right. And as we're coming to the end of our session for this evening, going forward with the you have got any other questions or any particular topics that you would like us to cover we can put the email address in the chat of where you can send your request to and not only that also sharing the details of if you want to register to become a part of the SDA Home Education Association we'll also put that in the chat and I'll pass it over to brother Joseph just so you can share with you a little bit more about that process and some of the other programs that we've got coming up later this month. Okay, um, Sister Nishka. So like she said, as we come, as uh, Sister Nishka said, as we bring the program to the close, I want to thank you so much uh, for being, um, you know, so engaging and, um, you know, with so many questions. We want to thank you for giving up your evening uh, to be with us uh, this evening and to kind of as we all share and network and get our questions answered. So just wanna let you know very quickly about two events that are happening this week organized by the association. Uh, I'll bring them up on the screen so you can see them and jot down any information that, you, that you'd like to. Um, but the first one that is kind of the most uh, recent one is on Tuesday, normally on the first Tuesday of each month, the first Tuesday of each month, we have a prayer and fasting day um, a day of prayer and fasting. It's not prescribed as to what you must do and what you must eat and not drink, but you know, we'll leave that between you and your families in terms of how you do it. Um, but it's just really an opportunity for us to come together as homeschooling parents. Um, we've just talked about some of the struggles that we have, and these are real struggles, uh, but we also know that with God's help, anything is possible. Um, and so we come together in prayer, uh, in fasting. What we tend to do is that we meet um, on three, three times throughout the course of the day. So the first meeting would normally be at um, six o'clock in the morning. Uh, then we would meet again at 12.30 and then we will meet again at six. Um, and those are normally about an hour um, for you know, prayer, prayer requests. Um, it's been amazing over the last year where we've had people come you know, to the next um, session and they've given a testimony of an answered prayer of what God has done. Um, so please do join us. Um, this week is uh, the 2nd of March, which is the first Tuesday. And then just make a note in your diary, just mark it out in your diary for the rest of the year. The first Tuesday of, e of each month is prayer and fasting. Uh, the second event that I want to share with you is on the screen. Um, so like Sister Anushka said, again, the association has been running for a number of uh, years. Um, and we want to this year actually have uh, an AGM as we're becoming a bit more active and proactive and um, just um, trying to support as many families. And in order to do that, we just need to 
uh, be a bit more um, formalized, as it were, not too formal, you know, but we want to be a bit more structured. Uh, and so we're inviting you actually on the 7th of March, which is basically a week today, exactly one week today. Next week, Sunday, we'll start a little bit later at 7.30, and we're going to have our AGM, an annual general meeting. And that sounds very grand, but believe me, it's not, it's not going to be boring. Um, it's going to be interesting. You're going to hear about some of the things that we've been doing in the past year. You hear about some of the things that we plan to do uh, in the course of the year. But why is the AGM impo important? It's important because the association really is what you desire for it to be. Uh, and so you as a member, as attendee to you know, these sessions, uh, we want to hear from you. We want to know about your struggles, your pain. We want to know about things that you want to know about. So that obviously moving forward, you know, we can organize things and provide materials uh, that are suitable to your needs. So please, uh, we join us as you have done this, this evening next week. Uh, with this particular one, you do need to register in advance. And so there you can see in blue right at the bottom where it says register at, it's got the address there, sdahomeeducation.org forward slash events. So if you could just go to that website and register yourself. Ideally, we would also um, looking for people who are registered members of the association. You might be wondering, how do I become a registered member? If you go on that same website, sdahomeeducation.org, there is a link. Um, you know, there is no cost at the moment to, re to, to be registered, but what it does is that obviously we get your details. We know that you're formally, you know, home educating or desire to be um, we'll have your details so that we can send you out information as and when we have uh, details. And also, it helps us to know what area you're in and who your local area coordinator is so that we can link you up with that individual. And so it's important that if you're not a member, please do visit that website, register for the event, and we'll see you on Tuesday for the prayer and fasting and also for next week, Sunday, uh, for the AGM, where we'll be kind of sharing with you our plans um, for the future and also what we've done in the past. And we cannot be an association without you. So please do attend. Um, if you know somebody who would benefit, then invite them also to, to come along next week, Sunday. That's it for me. <laughs> So, sis, oh, just to clarify, the time for the prayer and fasting, as Brother Joseph mentioned, they um, it normally takes place during three times during the portion of the day. It starts at six, the six o'clock, six a.m. Okay, that's it. I always get, I always get the middle one mixed up. Okay, yeah. the first one is at six a.m. The next one is at twelve thirty. And the final one for the day is at 6 p.m. The link is different. So again, we do send it out on the WhatsApp. So if, you're, if you don't receive any of our messages, please um, you know, send a private message to either myself or Anushka and we'll add you to the WhatsApp list so that you can get the details. Or also if you register, then we'll have your email address. We send out emails also. Okay, so if there are no other burning questions at this particular time, Sister Angela, if you're still there, can I invite you to close this session in a word of prayer for us, please? Yes, I will. Let's pray. Most gracious and eternal Heavenly Father, we'd just like to thank you, Lord, for the time that we've spent this evening together. I thank you for every single family that's been represented. Thank you for the things that we've learned and um, you've helped us to understand. And we know, Lord, that it's just so good for brethren to dwell together in unity. And we know that we can strengthen one another, particularly on this journey. I thank you, Lord, for uh, the wisdom and the experience that you've given. And I thank you, Lord, that you have given every parent that capability and that um, leadership to be able to teach and guide their children in the way that you would have them. You promise, Lord, that you yourself will uh, instruct us and you will guide us and you will lead us with your eye. I pray, Lord, that you will be very close to all the parents with all the, and all the families with all the children that are represented here and in the wider forum. Be with us, Lord, as we uh, depart now. 
I pray, Lord, that as we depart, we'll not depart from your presence. I pray that you will um, be with us as we go into another week and that we'll just um, honour and glorify you in all that we do. We thank you for the precious children that you've given us of all ages. And as we bring them up to serve you, Lord, there'll be lights in the world to shine and that we will, through the actual we do, Lord, hate in your soon coming as we long to be with you. We want to thank you and pray to you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.